So we are here with Kay Carly and she's going to do a demo. Okay. So I've got steps. Honeydew, which is the first go finished chalk acrylics. So just a sizable dob, sponge wedge. I'm going to pick that up and just use this as my paintbrush just to scribble on some paint. Now you haven't got to be precise with this. All you're doing is just getting a layer of paint on there. So once you've done that, it's gonna then give you a surface to which to be able to apply other paint. So for me, I like to add different colors. I've got a range of both opaques and translucents. So this particular one now I've got is cheesecake. You're not gonna need much of any of these colors now, but to apply it, I'm gonna use baby white. So you can see, mainly for my backgrounds, I don't tend to use paint brushes. I go with sponge wedges, baby wipes, that sort of thing. I just find that it gives me the effects that I want easier than using a paintbrush. But it, you can, obviously, if you want to. If you want to use a paintbrush, you can do that. I just find it quicker and easier just to swipe my way through. So that was cheesecake. I'll do exactly the same now with Dolly Mix. Again, tiny amount. And I'll pop out my other colors here as well. So Dolly Mix is an opaque. So I'm popping my opaques down first, and then going on to my translucents. So this is Hey Pesto, mm -hmm. and we've got Beach Hut. Now, the, when I want my most prominent color, I will use that last rather than first. So that is gonna be the color that will sit on the top. I don't tend to go with a different part of my um, baby wipe, I just continue with the same piece all the time. And it's just the same method, just randomly back and forth, just to create a background. Because you've got that dampness of the baby wipe, it's gonna give you a blend straight away. If you start to get a hole, as you can see like I have, just get a new piece okay, into some more paint and just randomly again, back and forth. So you can see the translucents are exactly that, they are translucent. You can see how it allows that base color still to come through, which is why I always use my translucents last. So always start off with your opaques and then build up different colors with your translucents. So that was Hey Pesto going now in with Beach Hut. Beach Hut is one of my favorite colors. I don't think there's many pieces that I don't create without a touch of Beach Hut somewhere. Really like that sort of lovely fresh turquoise look. So once I've applied my colors, I then like to bring some lightness back into the work. And for me, my paint of choice is then snowflake. Okay. So let me just find snowflake. I know some people like to use chalk, which is sort of a softer colour. But I quite like... Pure white. Yeah. I find that that gives a really nice highlight then. Now because I'm going with white, using a different part of the baby white, so into that. This time I'm just going to work it in a little bit. Snowflake is an opaque, so I don't suddenly want a real solid block of colour. Yeah. So just by working it in to that baby white allows you then to create just soft, subtle highlights coming through. And that then helps just with the blend of the paint. It immediately looks softer. And that is then perfect for me to start stamping on or stenciling on. And it's entirely up to you how soft you want to make it. If you feel that you've done it too much, 
you can come back in with a different colour. Mm -hmm. So you could bring your translucents back if you've lost a lot of the pink. For me, I feel that I've lost too much of that pink. Because that's an opaque, you can bring that back in and have that soft pink coming back through. How much you're happy? You stop, you stamp, stencil, however you next want to proceed. Mm -hmm. okay, so I'm going to carry on, I'm going to start stamping on mine. Just cleaning up my workspace a bit. Sorry Joe, am I rocking it? Yeah, we have Joe here. Hello. <laughs> Hiya. So the beauty of the chalk acrylics, that is now dry. Okay. So they're really, really quick drying. Nice. Now I have got my butterfly stamp set here, which is that's the new one. this one. Yeah, that's the new one. Mm -hmm. Now this has got a matching stencil. I will be using that in just a second. But I want to start just by creating just a background and all I'm going to be doing is using the text. So we'll take that. Now I pulled out leaf green ink pad, so archival leaf green. And that's all I'm going to use just to randomly stamp all over my background. So because this background is multicolored and it's quite light and the ink pad is quite light, I'm actually inking up every time for the moment just to get my placement of words where I want them and visible. Once I've created a background with the prominent words, I'll then go on and do some second generation stamping or maybe even third generation stamping. Mm -hmm. So you can see, really not thinking about it and then you can just start to come in and just randomly add some more faded images of your words. It's up to you how many you want to use. So that's just given me an all over background there. So once we've done that, I then like to start adding some stenciled imagery. So for me, I'm just going to take now my matching butterfly stencil, which is this one here. Nice. Now this is sized Perfect. to match. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this one goes with that butterfly, mm -hmm. this one goes with that one. Now if you want it to be perfectly positioned then you can use a stamping platform. But I'll show you where I'm going actually. This is sort of what I'm creating. So you might be able to see here where I've got that stencil of the butterfly behind. And what it does, it gives you a shadow and it gives you something light to actually start painting your translucent colours yeah. on. So more like a bump effect or a shadow effect. Yeah, kind of, but yeah, exactly. So it's so okay it, if it's not perfectly stamped. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So let's take our stencil and let's pop. I'm going to use the big butterfly first. I'm going to come back with snowflake. Now ordinarily I tend to use a dome stencil brush. I do prefer that. But if you haven't got one, you can make do with the square end of a sponge wedge if you want to. So I'm going to pick that paint up so it's going to be wet on the end of your sponge Okay, to start off with but you don't ever pop your sponge through your stencil while it's like that. You're going to work it in. So just lots of tapping till it's worked in and then that is the right consistency then to start popping through your stencil. So you can see it's just loads of light tapping. By keeping that paint fairly dry, it helps to prevent any bleed coming under that stencil. So every time you load up that sponge, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Just 
tap it and work it in. So just, I like to go quite quickly when I'm applying my paint through a stencil. If you go slower, what often happens is that you start to push harder and it's then going to push that paint under and we don't want that. So just lots of really quick light tapping. So there's my first butterfly. Then we're going to do exactly the same thing with my second one. So you can actually go quite quickly with this. So this tends to be more the speed that I do when I'm working at home. But often for demoing I just slow it down a tad so people can see what I'm doing. So second one, Whoops. on a slippery surface, we can just about fit in a third. And when it comes to stamping my foreground imagery, I always tend to go with a black ink pad. Just because I like the sharpness and the clarity that that gives me. I know lots of people like brown, which of course gives you a vintage look. So you can immediately change the entire look of your piece, just depending what colours you're going to be using. So I'm going for a sort of like a clean, fresh, bright look with mine. So I will use black. So there we can see our stencil butterflies. Now have we got a heat gun, Joe? No. <laughs> no, no, no. We have no heat gun, so uh, okay. Drying the paint. <laughs> now to Do stamp on top yeah, of it. Yeah. <laughs> go old school. So this is going to be a bit boring bit. You might want to pause this bit. <laughs> okay. So hopefully that is now dry. Clean up the stencil later. I'm going to take now large butterfly from that matching stamp set onto a large acrylic block. Now I must admit these are really big images so ordinarily at home I tend to use a stamping platform for this just to make sure that it's really going to stamp out well. And that of course gives you the option of being able to stamp it again in exactly the right place. But for quickness and everything here, <laughs> we are just going to go yeah. straight in. We don't work what we um, <laughs> Exactly. We have to talk to the end So loads of it. Now as I was saying, these are perfectly sized, or the stencil is perfectly sized, to go with the stamps. But it doesn't really matter if it doesn't perfectly line up because what it's going to do is just provide you a shadow. Now I find the really easiest way sense, for so placement you know, is to go with the top of the wings. Okay. Don't come with these bits because yeah. you can see these bits are trails yep. and there's no trails on the stencil so yeah exactly. Go with, go with the tips and that will give you a rough idea of where you're placing. It's not going to be perfect and for this sort of technique and look it doesn't have to be perfect but just loads of pressure because this is a really big stamp so we're going to lift off you can see that it is pretty close in fact it might be a bit too close for what i actually wanted it to look so, so you can get it you know more or less where it needs to be you do exactly the same now with my smaller butterfly. So inking up with jet black. So really spend some time making sure this is thoroughly covered. Because say large stamp and you've got one go at it. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing, use the tip of those wings to line up. You can see I like to turn my piece so that 
the butterfly is square on to me. So it's going to be roughly there. Lots of pressure. And lift up. And again, you can see that that is pretty close. Yep. So, one more. And again, just turn that towards you. Have a look, see where it is. It helps if your apron isn't twittering it. Okay. Lots of pressure. And lift up. Beautiful. And then, it's just a matter of watercolouring now, these images. To do that, with the paper artsy paste, all it is, is just a drop of paint and it needs to be a translucent paint or a semi-opaque. Uh -huh. So something like Bougainvillea, Tango, I think that one's Tango, things like this. Yep. Just a tiny amount. Beach Hut is another really good one. So it's literally just a tiny drop. <laughs> you right? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. Onto your mat. <laughs> And then it is a really wet paintbrush. Let's go with. It. Oh, <laughs> so sorry. That Joe has just thrown sorry, in. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so loads of water. So yep. the paintbrush is really wet. And just pick up some of that paint. Yeah. Then you can come in and use that to start getting a watercolour look. So you can see a little goes a long way. What I like to do is then immediately come in with my next colour. Blend it. Exactly. So that you're then not going to get a harsh line. But you can see if you water that down really well, how you still get all that stamp detail through. I would normally mix it with satin glaze, but with Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, you can. I find that with satin glaze when you mix, for me, it dries it too quickly. Yeah, and it would not blend as yeah, much. Yeah, exactly. Now, I've managed to lose my baby wipe. There we go. So when changing colour, pinch off your excess. Make sure you've got a clean paintbrush. Into your next one, exactly the same. Nice wet paintbrush. And you can then come back through to blend those colours together and if you want to go with another colour it's exactly the same just start here and blend back through take a clean paintbrush and just sort of wiggle it where your two colours meet and that's then how I get this sort of blended watercolour look very beautiful. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Bye. Bye.